Hey, applause and good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be the next Phillies offseason videos. This is going to be on the pickup of Scott Morris, who fits the repertoire of how the Phillies have been picking people up, trying to get guys with very good strikeout rates, not the best control. It really fits the repertoire of the entire league, honestly, lately. Trying to get guys with very good strikeout rates that obviously um, have a little bit of a walk problem or a big walk problem. And that's the thing that they need to fix, like Ryan Sheriff, who, of course, the Phillies also picked up, or somebody like Nelson, or, of course, uh, somebody like Jose Alvarado, who still just pitched meh last year, and you're still trying to build back into what you saw when Alvarado first came up before he really started having the control problems after the league figured him out, and he could have do the same thing, and hasn't really fully ever responded to that yet, but relief pitchers also roller coastery, like I said before, so it's great to have as much movement and as much talent in your bullpen. And the Phillies are definitely starting to do that, even though Moss um has been a guy that has struck or has started in the um minors and is a guy mm-hmm. that was in the Trevor Bauer trade that was originally um the one from Cleveland to Cincinnati. Um he's a guy that has made 26 starts between double A AA and triple A and has a 2.96 ERA and struck out 159 batters, which is really good, obviously, in 130 and two third innings. His big issue is he needs to really work on lowering his walks, just like I talked about in a video that I did, of course, about Ryan Sheriff in this one, in this uh, channel. He needs to work on his walk rate big time, which is the same thing with Sheriff. Otherwise, he would have a he has a good ground ball rate. Uh, when it comes to Sheriff, he just needs to work on his walk rate. Where when it comes to Moss, he has very good overall pitches, four solid pitches, because he's a starter at this current juncture. Maybe he's a starter or he's a reliever as a southpaw um, when time comes as he continues to develop. But at this current juncture, he's a starting pitcher. Dave Dombrowski obviously has been solid in the past, whether it's in Boston or whether it's in Detroit at building starting rotations via getting solid pickups from other teams, but also via obviously spending big on other people as well, which he hasn't had the opportunity to do yet uh, with the rotation. But when it comes to this rotation, you already have Will, you already have Suarez. Obviously, if Noah can bounce back, you have Aaron Noah if you don't trade him. So bringing in guys that have talent, you just need to harness it. The Phillies have a whole new development system led by Don Mattingly's son now, and bringing in all these new people I've been reading throughout the season. You see different guys cycle in and other people cycle out from the development staff. So it's going to be interesting to see how those people improve upon and if they improve upon and really fix, because it's not going to be like this, because the Phillies' development system and how it's been has not been working for about a decade now. So you have to switch it big time and kind of get it going into the motions that you see the Rays, A's, even Dodgers, big market teams do it, Dodgers, Red Sox, um, Yankees, as much as I hate to admit it, um, like big market teams have very good staffs that are able to find those diamond and the rough guys combined with the great players you see, like the Torres, Torreses of the world to use the, um, Yankees, for example, like you have all these different players that fit in to the pieces of the puzzle with those guys. And sometimes the Phillies, when it comes to pitching, especially the Phillies, they don't really have it that and find that and be able to develop it. They kind of end up porn it or kind of tarnishing guys. Development would be the word to use, like they did, where they tell guys like Zach Eflin to throw up in the zone. And then when we've seen him have every other pitching coach when healthy, he's been a lot better since. So this is a move I like on the surface from the fact that he obviously has very good surface numbers in the MILB. It's just just like Ryan Sheriff as a reliever and just like Alvarado as a reliever. Scott Moss as a starter, especially if you want to stay as a starter. Otherwise, you're definitely going to move to the pen with the walk rate. And maybe he can um, figure it out there. As a starter, you're going to really need to work on lowering it because... He was a 2.18 in 18 to 4.8 in 19 and 6.6 in 21. Um, So that's going the wrong direction. You don't want your walk rate to be going up 
particularly as a starting pitcher. We see relief pitchers around all of baseball with control problems. So somebody will give you, if not us, probably us will give you a chance as a reliever if you just have the good wipeout stuff and you can get guys out. Like Jake Diekman never really had control in his entire career, but was a pretty solid relief pitcher, obviously, and really good in certain years away from the Phillies and Wow here early in his career. So you need to just harness it enough to be a very good reliever, but if this guy wants to be that back end five starter or four starter, obviously he's going to need to really work on probably motion. Usually sometimes when it comes to guys, I hear Pedro talk about this, John Smoltz, whenever they have the MLB uh, network, like when they're explaining guys, normally it's their motion or their foot position or their drive to home. Obviously I haven't um, I've seen him in different MILB games over MILB TV, but I haven't really watched Scott Moss that much and his overall motion. Maybe it's something with how he drives at home play. Maybe something with how his arm slings across. Either way, the Phillies are just going to have to, with this pickup, again, figure out how to harness his control and make it the best it can possibly be. He is a big guy coming at you. Um, <clears throat> He is a guy that is 6'6". Six, six, so he's big coming at you, a kind of um, intimidating force would be the way to put it, as he's throwing the pitches at you coming to home plate. But he still obviously needs to get the control because none of that matters if you don't have control. Also, being that tall, you usually see guys like that in the bullpen rather than um, figuring it out in the rotation. But we've obviously seen some really tall, really successful starters. And hopefully Scott Morris is one of them so the Phillies can kind of fill out the bottom half of the rotation with somebody like the Hans Krauses of the world and the Scott Morses of the world. And then we, of course, have, if we don't move them, the Abels and Andrew Painters of the world amongst other guys that can fit into that back end in the prospect pool in the minors. But thank you for watching this video, everybody. This has been the video on the Phillies picking up Scott Morse, another enticing pickup that has good stuff, very good numbers, minus walk rate and any on-base numbers for him giving up the walk, basically, that the analytics community now uses. Those are the numbers he doesn't have. He does have very good movement, though, and he does have very good surface numbers elsewhere. Just need to get those walks under control. And obviously, the Phillies have a whole new development staff, as mentioned earlier, to be able to try to do that now. So peace out, everybody. Stay safe and go Phillies. Let's believe that we're going to make even a bigger pickup, nice small pickups, early in the offseason. Now let's get to the bigger pickups. Peace out, everybody.